head of the World Wildlife Fund in Mexico says the monarch butterfly is at serious risk of disappearing. Scientists are alarmed because they've witnessed a plunge in the number of monarchs on their annual winter migration to Mexico. The number of monarch butterflies that made it to Mexico last year was so small that many now question if the population will ever rebound to its previous size. The insect's numbers have been in a free fall for the past 30 years, and this season is the worst yet. Herbicides to protect crops like corn and soybeans from weeds are also killing the butterfly's food source, a plant called milkweed. Scientists say the winged wonders are being hit from all sides. Deforestation, herbicide use and climate change, a sort of perfect storm pushing them to the brink. Two big reasons cited their primary food source, the milkweed, has been disappearing, along with what logging has done to their forest habitat. Lund, and I really want to help out the monarchs. This five video series is meant to show you how to raise monarchs should you want to. Now let's be clear, the monarch butterfly is not an endangered species, it's not even a threatened species. It lives in many parts of the world, North America, but also South America and parts of Australia. However, the eastern and midwest states have a migratory route that runs from those states down to Mexico every year and then back up. And that path is in danger of being eliminated. The major reason is due to loss of milkweed. Milkweed being lost from development of areas that used to support the plant, also the use of herbicides by farmers that can kill off the milkweed plant even just by the runoff. So the number one way to help, if you want to, is to plant milkweed. It can be just as easy as collecting the seeds in the fall and then planting them in the spring. But if you want to get more involved, one other way to do this is to help raise the monarchs. Collecting the eggs from the wild, bringing them home, and then taking care of them until they become adults and releasing them. In the wild, the eggs have about a 10% chance of surviving. In some studies, it shows even as low as 3% to make it from the egg to the adult. If you can do better than that, then you're already making a difference. These five videos are meant to show you how I've been raising monarchs for the last three years, and I do not claim that it is the best way. It's just what I've been doing, and I've had some success with it. In the comments section, I encourage questions and definitely suggestions, but keep in mind, I am no expert. Just a guy trying to help some butterflies. This first video is meant to show you how you can find the eggs out in the wild, so let's get to it. To find monarch eggs, you're going to need to find milkweed. Milkweed is the only plant that the monarch will lay her eggs on, because it's the only plant that the caterpillars will eat. Caterpillars depend upon the milkweed because of the toxins that are inside of the plant. Those toxins build up in the caterpillars make them very distasteful, helps keep predators from eating them. So if you want to find the eggs, the first step is to find the milkweed. Okay, so if you're going to look for monarch eggs, then you're going to need to find yourself some milkweed. And there's lots of different types of milkweed around. Here in Michigan, there's two primary types that I often find, and that's common milkweed and swamp milkweed. This here is your swamp milkweed. It's got a lot smaller leaves and it definitely has red stems almost all the time. The common milkweed, here, right here next to it, has much larger leaves. I've found that the monarchs, here in Michigan at least, almost primarily prefer the common milkweed. I'm not saying that they don't land on the swamp milkweed and lay eggs there, but I've never seen it. If they have the choice, common milkweed's normally what they go with, and so that's what I stick with too. Until you get good at it, you might not exactly know what the milkweed plant is as far as being able to easily identify it. 
One quick test to always know is that if you break open the stem, if you break open the leaf, you are going to have this sappy white stuff come off of it. Same thing also whether it's swamp or the common milkweed, it's where it gets its name from. Monarchs tend to lay their eggs on the underside of the leaves, so when I check the plants, I do a quick scan on the top side because I have sometimes found eggs, very rarely, but sometimes on the top of the leaf, but it's usually on the underside that you want. To check them, rather than twisting every single leaf and possibly damaging the plant, I'll just take one finger and push on the stem of it, on the base of the plant, and quickly just scan on the underside of the leaves. I'll do it on one side, and then I'll do it on the other. Oh, and we are, wow, we're already lucky. Uh, we got one right, right here on this leaf, right on the underside. Okay, so we've got the egg right there. When you get used to doing this a lot, you'll be able to identify them pretty quickly. But when I first started doing this, I would sometimes be confused an egg compared to a little sphere of the sap from the plant. Sometimes an insect might bite the leaf, cause damage to the leaf just a little bit, and you might get a little sphere of the white sap that dries. This here, though, is definitely not that. It's an egg. I can tell from the slightly yellow tinge that it has. And if you look really sharp when you're when you're doing this, if you look closely, you'll be able to see that it comes to a tip, and you might even be able to look close enough to see that it has ridges. Okay, so you found an egg on a leaf. The next thing I do before I get too excited, I want to check over the rest of this plant now before I start doing anything to take the leaf. So I'm just going to take another quick look, just make sure I've covered everything and I've found all the eggs that are on here. I also want to make sure I don't disturb any possible caterpillars that I missed that might have already hatched. I don't want to be tearing off a leaf and knocking them loose and causing them harm. But I've looked this over, I don't find any others. So what I do now, if this is my leaf, I'm going to take it right by the base of the plant and just a quick push down and I've got the leaf. Now the other thing that I do, since it's going to be sapping, is I have these jars ready to go. They have a little damp cloth on the inside. So I'll place it right in there. So, as we're looking for these eggs, you might wonder, like, what kind of plant should I look at as far as, should it be an adult milkweed, should it be a young milkweed? I have found eggs on just about every type of milkweed, whether it be a very large, mature plant or a really young, just sprouted plant. This one here really doesn't look that beautiful. It doesn't have any flowers on it. It's missing a lot of leaves. Uh, one of the leaves looks a little bit damaged by something, but even on this one, we were able to find an egg right there. So it's not, I wouldn't overlook these ones that are just sometimes looking shoddy. You might think a mother butterfly wouldn't choose that one, but they tend to. More often than not, I've found just one egg per plant, but sometimes I find two like this. There's been a time I've even found 12 on one plant, six eggs on one leaf. Here's another plant, kind of drooped over, doesn't really look that healthy, yet turn it over and we actually have two on this leaf and we have a third here on this leaf, three on one plant. Monarch mothers are not that picky. Before you start collecting, you want to make sure that you do have access to plenty of milkweed leaves. Once you take the eggs, they're going to be dependent upon you to get them food. They're going to need some fresh leaves every day or every other day. So if you only have like one spot where there's milkweed, that might not be a, enough to support how many eggs you take. So keep that always in mind. However many eggs you're capturing, taken from the wild, make sure that you have access to enough milkweed to support it. Something you gotta do when you're collecting the eggs before 
you really even set out to do it, is try to decide how many can you actually care for. It, it can be that you find a plant where there could be 10 on there. Can you really take care of all 10? At some point in time, once this caterpillar is old enough, I'm going to be needing to get it an, a leaf a day. And if I've got 10 caterpillars, and i got to think, can I actually provide 10 milkweeds on any given day? Um, I try to set myself a number, you should set one too, and really think about three main things. Time, commitment, and resources. Do you have the time to take care of these? You know, are you going to be able to, even if you have all the milkweed that you can, are you going to be able to actually sit down each day and make sure that they have the right amount of food, transfer them from leaf to leaf, which future videos will talk about? Do you have the commitment? Uh, if you're doing this in the summer, are you going on a vacation anytime soon? You might need to take them with you. Can you do that? When you go on vacation, are you going to be able to find the milkweed wherever you're going? And then the third one would be the actual resources. Do you have milkweed available to you? Do you have enough milkweed available to you? Do you know where it's at in your area? So uh, please watch the future videos and we'll teach you about how to hatch them and how to further raise them. Ever, ever had